free market capitalism has been one of the biggest buzzwords that has gone around the United States of America for at least 70 years now. And uh, I think that's very interesting because um, when we talk about free market capitalism, you know, we have to break this into two parts, the free market part and the capitalism part. Now, the free market is a place where anybody should have the right um, to buy and sell a good or commodity in the market. And um, this is the main and important feature of the free market, is that nobody should be blocked from buying, nobody should be blocked from selling, nobody should be blocked from even producing goods and services. And this is uh, the hallmarks of the free market system, uh, which is why um, free markets hate monopolies. You know, today you see a lot of fight against Google um, because they're a monopoly and they're trying to flex themselves like a monopoly. And uh, this is something that free marketers hate. Now, this audio is going to focus more on the capitalism part because this is today, shall I safely say, one of the most misunderstood terms in our society in the sense that it is not misunderstood. Uh, there are defenders, there are um, people that hate it. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people that hate it don't see it rationally. And this is one of the issues that I find. It's not frustrating because everybody comes from a different economic background and scenario. Their worldviews are different. And uh, I completely accept the premise. Um, but I do feel the arguments are so light, weak, and absolutely um, they have no ground. Um, I myself am not a 100% capitalist in the sense of, in the sense that it is being published today. Uh, and uh, in fact, I don't like 100% capitalism. It is terrible for our societies. Um, but uh, let me tell you what are the main aspects of a capitalistic society. They are the producer, the laborer, and the consumer. So unfortunately, a lot of people that are capitalists think only in terms of, okay, I'm the producer, meaning I'm the business owner. I'm the one who's creating value in the market, and I'm the most important person. Now, I would say that um, in terms of how the balance of producer, labor, and consumer is, you are maybe 34% when labor is 33% and consumer is 33%. You might be 34%, maybe even higher. But I do think the producer is the most important guy because he comes up with the idea. Now, here's where the producer doesn't become important. Just because you come up with an idea doesn't mean people are going to buy it. Yeah? Just because people are going to buy it doesn't mean you're going to get laborers to work for you because sometimes the labor can be extremely hard, life-threatening even. So, um, the producer, I would say, is not the most important. In the is the most important, sorry, but in the sense that he's the most important and he's the most important. Um, I don't think he is like the only reason why the market exists, but I do think they are very important. They're probably the most important, and um, this is, I think, one of the issues with people that hate capitalism. Um, the people that. Uh, espouse communism, communism or people that, you know, are sympathetic to communistic ideology. So I myself, I would say I'm a 80% capitalist, 80% communist and 80% uh, something else, you know. But um, one of the issues that I'm going to raise up is the fact that in all of these arguments and talks, people talk about the producer and the laborer. Nobody cares about the consumer. You know? And I'll tell you why this is a negative impact. It impacts society widely. So one of the issues with a capitalistic society as it is today in many countries is that when the cost of labor increases, the cost of goods sold also increases, meaning the cost to the consumer increases drastically. And the reason why this is an issue is because if the cost of the product increases to the consumer, um, the consumer must be able to afford it, number one. Number two, if he cannot afford it, his salary must increase to afford it. Now, here's the problem with this. Think about it for a minute. If 
the salary has to increase for the consumer for him to be able to afford it. What that means is that the salary keeps increasing, the cost of the goods keeps increasing. What this is going to create is going to create a economic divide. You know, this is what creates an economic divide. What happens is labor cost increases, price of goods keep increasing to the point where it is unaffordable to buy even the simplest of things. And this is the trickle, this is the, the ripple effect that happens when um, labor costs keeps increasing. You know, and um, one of the hardest things of any society is to be able to provide fair wages for labor, fair working conditions for labor, and yet maintain the cost to the consumer. And um, this is one of the most challenging aspects of our society, and it hardly ever gets spoken about. So in India, we have consumer courts that uh, supposedly protect the consumers. And um, I say that with such disdain because you cannot go to a consumer court and win a proper case because they will drag it out. You know, they will drag it out. Our system is so slow in protecting consumers that it is impossible for you to even fathom yourself going and fight, fighting for 10 years for stuff that are probably can be sold over two or three phone calls for a period of one month. And this is the issue in India. This is the reason why um, you will see the divide between American product owners that provide customer support and Indian product owners that provide customer support. The divide is so huge. And the reason is because in our country, we do have some consumer protection laws, but um, laws in our country don't necessarily um, get enforced. And this is one of the major issues uh, with what happens in the consumer side in our country is that we are not protected at all. And so what has happened is that um, 20 years ago, if you could afford a house, today you have to pay 10 times more for that same house. That's that's inflation. That's crazy inflation. That is the you know, rise of housing prices because there is no protection for consumers. Now, inflation is not just um, a consumer side issue. Uh, inflation in the housing market does have a lot of factors, but this is one of the key factors that influence housing market decisions. Um, another beautiful example is maybe 50 years ago, you could buy tea for one rupees. Today, you have to pay a minimum of 10 rupees. And I've spoken this in my previous video, uh, sorry, audio about um, what I mean by 10 rupees and 20 rupees and 100 rupees, 20 rupees tea. The point is that today, you have to pay 20 times, 10 times more. Now, there are two ways of looking at this. One is that inflation is good. It means the population is able to afford it. The problem is that if inflation goes too much, which does happen in some industries, you cannot afford it. And the problem that creates is that creates wealth and income inequality, wealth inequality, not income inequality, sorry, wealth inequality. And um, although wealth inequality will always exist, the degree to which it happens in a society is very important. Um, if the wealth inequality the society is too high. So, for example, if 10 people can ha buy a house um, in a city of 1,000 people, that's a huge problem. You know, if 500 people can buy a house in a city of 1,000 people, that's a relatively okay problem because it means that maybe the remaining 500 can rent out or something like that. Um, the best is when at least... 800 people can buy a house in a city of 1,000 people uh, because that will, that will have a great uh, balance in the economy. And um, what's going to happen is people that buy their houses are not going to sell their houses because they're going to live there. And what that means is that inflation in the market doesn't happen, but movement in the market also doesn't happen. So there's no demand and supply there. Um, you know. So... That's the interesting thing about that, but um, I digress. 
Thank you for listening. This is part one of episode two. Stay tuned, part two.